Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Thule Arcos. This is going to be an enclosed hitch mounted cargo carrier. Now if you're familiar with rooftop boxes, this is going to look very similar. It's got that hard shell exterior, it's enclosed storage, locking so it keeps all your stuff safe and away from prying eyes, but rather than putting it on the roof, you're going to be putting it into your hitch. It's going to help with a number of things. It's not going to add any height to your vehicle, so pulling into your garage as long as you've got the length, it's going to be no problem. Any other low clearance situations though, maybe like a parking garage, you're not going to have to worry about it. For things like your EVs, it's not going to create near as much drag helping with your range and even on a normal gas car, again, it's not going to be creating as much drag and noise because it's back here kind of shielded from the wind as you're driving down the road. And then obviously the enclosed nature of it makes it so you don't have to worry about the elements as much if you hit some rain on your road trip. It keeps people from looking at the stuff and keeps it locked up and safe. Let's check it out. So not only do you get the benefits of security, fuel economy, and just general ease of use, you've got a lot of con convenience features on here too. We've got our full four pole wiring plugged in right now. You will need that on your vehicle if you want this to work, but you can find those kits here at eTrailer.com. And it's already pre-wired on the Arcos box. So all you need to do, plug into that four pole wiring, and now you've got things like your hazards, turn signals, brake lights, and running lights as well as a light for the license plate bracket on the outer edge. So we don't have to worry about anything being obstructed on the back end. Our license plate will always be visible. So for the states where that's required, you don't have to worry about it. And our taillights and those functions will be visible to other drivers at night or just in general when you're driving down the road if the box were to cover it up. So we don't have to worry about other drivers not knowing our intentions whenever we're changing lanes or making turns. And at the back end, we can unlock the carrier using the included key, squeeze this trigger latch to release it, and open that lid up to reveal the 14 cubic feet of storage space inside. Now, compared to some other boxes out there, it's certainly not the biggest, but it does have a good amount of space. We've got a sleeping bag and two different size suitcases in here. One thing to keep in mind with loading this up, though, is the weight limits. This can only support a weight capacity of 110 pounds and the carrier itself weighs 66 pounds. So you'll need to take that into consideration when loading it into your hitch, but also just make sure that you're not overloading the box. Now, the good thing about this is it will work with a two inch or an inch and a quarter hitch. So whether you've got a class one, two or three hitch, you can use it. And especially for those class one hitches, the tongue weight often becomes a limiting factor there because typically they can only support up to a 200 pound tongue weight. But in theory, with a fully loaded Arcos and the weight of the box itself, you'll only be totaling to 176 pounds. So as long as your vehicle can withstand that kind of downward pressure, that sort of tongue weight, then you should be in business, which is great because a lot of vehicles that only have inch and a quarter class one hitch options are also gonna have very limited cargo space. So this can be a great way to expand that space. Now, the other benefit is going to be vehicles with glass roofs. This is kind of a bad example because we do have a roof rack on here, but vehicles with glass roofs have much more limited options for roof racks, which means options for roof mounted boxes are also very limited. A lot of times, even if you do have an option, it can be kind of a pain to install and not many people might want to mess with that. And that's totally understandable. For me, I think loading it in the hitch is going to be much easier and gives you that same expanded cargo space with much more ease on your part. Now, as far as your internal usable space goes, I want to give you some measurements to better figure out what can actually fit. For the side to side, we're working with 55 and 1 8 of an inch. Again, that's interior usable space. From front to back, we're working with 20 inches. And from bottom to top with the lid closed, we're going to be working with 17 and 5 16 of an inch. And just some more measurements for a frame of reference. Our suitcase here, the larger one, is gonna be about 28 inches tall and about 17 inches wide and about 12 inches tall in this laid down state. And the smaller one next to it is going to be about 22 inches tall and 14 inches wide and a little bit shorter when it's laid down on its side like this than the other one. And then we still had a little bit of extra room on the side for a sleeping bag. 
Now, I could see this being very useful for some other things, maybe like a stroller when it's all compacted down, maybe some gear for the beach, things like that. To get all of your cargo secured, there are included cam buckle straps, three in total with anchor points in the base of the box. That's gonna be located in the middle and the sides. And as I remove this, you'll see those anchor points right in the bottom. So you'll just pre-run your strap through, kind of set it to the side, load your stuff in and wrap the straps around the top to help keep things from shifting around. Now, I really like this because if we wanted to, we could probably crisscross them a little bit just to keep things extra secure. But the way we had things laid out today, it lined up pretty well with all three of the things we had loaded inside. And it just makes sure that things, again, don't shift when you're going down the road. You don't have to worry about things bumping into each other and causing damage. If you are loading this up with some maybe messy stuff, things from the beach that you want to get clean whenever you're done, you can clean the box out very easily by removing these rubber grommets from the two corners and just hosing the whole thing off. Inside, it's all going to be that same hard shell plastic material. So you don't have to worry about getting it wet. All the wires and everything back here are enclosed in wire loom, but you can wash this out and any of that excess muck and water will drain out through the corners. So it's really easy to clean and maintain. When closing it, that key won't be able to be removed unless the lid is fully latched. So right now I can't turn it into that locked position and remove the key because the lid isn't properly latched. That's one complaint I did have with this is that it didn't feel like it latched very easily. So you have to kind of go back and push. You can kind of hear a small click. I'll see if I can get the mic close to it. And really all three latches are gonna be just where these rivets are located and where the Thule logo is located. So just give it a quick squeeze to make sure all of them engage. You can turn and remove that key and you can always go back through and check to make sure that it did properly latch, which it did. When getting this in and out of your hitch, it's gonna be pretty large and hard to handle. One thing that makes that easier though is the fact that the box is removable from the platform it's mounted to, and it's pretty easy to do. They include an Allen key and it secures to the platform with two bolts. So we'll just come to those bolts on these raised sections inside the box and undo those. Make sure your four pole wiring is unplugged and just pull out on the box a little bit and it'll release it from the arms. You can grab it kind of towards the middle here. Now this part is a little bit heavy, could be easier with an extra set of hands, but it is doable on your own. Then the platform that's left behind is going to be a surprisingly lightweight but durable black powder coated steel. The powder coat is going to make sure you don't have to worry about rust and corrosion over time. And this will be the piece that actually slides into our hitch. At the very end there, we can see it's got a silver sleeve. That's the piece we'll remove if we intend to use it with an inch and a quarter hitch or leave it on for a two inch hitch application. The pin on the side here is going to be the stinger pin. That's going to be a little bit different than a standard hitch pin and clip. Make it a little bit easier because you just slide it in, get it aligned and pop that stinger in. That's gonna make it easier for things like this Tesla, where it's a little bit hard to get some hands in there and tighten down an anti-rattle bolt or even feed a pin through. So just get it lined up, push the stinger in, make sure it's not coming out, and tighten down the built-in anti-rattle device. This one uses a large hand knob, so all this is completely tool-free, and that can be locked up for security purposes. Key to like to the box up top, this will make sure that if it is in the locked position, the knob just free spins and no one can loosen it up and remove it without your key. And on top of those arms, we can see how it slides in and mounts. You're gonna have some studs that slide in these tracks and into these channels to do the initial bit of securing. And those bolts that we removed earlier will thread into some pre-threaded holes on the outside of the arms. So that'll make sure that the box stays put whenever you've got it in place. The other things you need to consider is how well this will work with your vehicle as far as clearances are concerned. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point out on the carrier, it's gonna be 43 inches. So it does add a considerable amount of length to your vehicle. Something to consider for your garage or your parking spaces whenever you're traveling. And also hatch clearance. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the closest point of the box is gonna be 14 inches. Now, 
That's going to let us know if we have clearance for things like our hatch. Obviously, it's going to sit a little bit differently on every vehicle depending on the height of your hitch. So it's not a guaranteed fit if you think you have clearance because the hatch will swing out a little bit more in certain parts. But the box is tapered in a way where it kind of cuts in a bit. And on our Tesla today, you can see we do have plenty of room for that hatch to open up. You just might find that if your hitch and the carrier sit very close to your vehicle, that you have limited clearance for still opening this. I will say though, if you're using this on a smaller vehicle with an inch and a quarter hitch, maybe a sedan with a trunk rather than a hatch, you should be totally fine there because those tend to not come out near as much when opening them. And some other clearances with the bumper here from the center of the hitch pin hole to the closest point on the bottom of the shank here is gonna be eight inches and it tapers up to about nine inches at the top here. Again, I think there's gonna be plenty of room for most bumpers where this will fit because of that taper and the length, but something to consider if your hitch sits really far recessed underneath the, your vehicle. And the final things to consider are what your other options are. Now we mentioned roof boxes and standard hitch mounted cargo carriers in the beginning. And I think for most people, that's gonna be for a different need. If you're looking at this, chances are you don't want something sticking up from the roof and you want something enclosed, so a open hitch basket is going to be probably not your best option because it's exposed to the elements. Those are great because they do have great weight capacities, but it really only applies if your hitch can handle it too, and you have need for that much weight capacity. Something like this, again, is gonna be more convenient, easier to reach than a roof box, and it's locked and enclosed. You don't have to tie things down near as tight as you would with an open cargo carrier. As far as similar options go, there's gonna be two that you might consider looking at. The gear deck from Let's Go Aero and the Yakima Exo Swing Away Cargo Carrier. Now, both of those options are gonna be for two inch hitches only. And although they offer some good benefits, I think if you need something that can fit in an inch and a quarter hitch, this is your only option. Now, I will say I'm a big fan of both options for separate reasons. The Let's Go Aero Box can slide back, giving you additional clearance for your hatch if this doesn't give you enough room as it is, so you don't have to sacrifice that function of your vehicle. And the Yakima Exosystem swings away on a swing away arm, again, giving you clearance from your hatch. So both of those are great because you have that option if it doesn't sit far enough away. The other thing to consider there is that the Yakima Exosystem has a ton of expandability. You can add a second shelf on top of it and mount a second box. You can mount bike racks and other things like that. So there's lots of room to expand and build it out to fit your needs for adventuring. But if you only need something that can hold a few things like some luggage, a stroller, some camping gear, and you just want it to stay enclosed, this can definitely do the trick. Plus the Arcos comes with the license plate bracket, that four pole wiring pre-routed, and the taillights just out of the box standard. So if you want those features, you don't have to pick them up separately. But again, if that all fits your needs, I think it's gonna be a great fit for you and your vehicle. This has just been our look at the Thule Arcos enclosed hitch mounted cargo carrier. Thanks for watching.